Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I recently discovered the key trait that makes a guy attractive to a girl. It's so obvious, I can't believe I didn't see it earlier. And that key trait is an accent. Every TV show ever shows girls loving guys with accents. So I decided to give myself an accent. But all accents are hard to learn, so I decided to go with the <clears throat> rock bottom accent. <clears throat> this accent <clears throat> is the best <clears throat> to learn, <clears throat> so I can't <clears throat> wait to <clears throat> finally <clears throat> be happy. <clears throat> Rock Bottom is the episode where Spongebob gets stuck in Rock Bottom after he and Patrick accidentally get on the wrong bus. Like ARG, this episode aired on March 15, 2000 and it's the first time the famous Bikini Bottom theme park Glove World is shown on screen. It's only shown briefly at the very beginning and is mentioned a couple times later in the episode. Despite that, it seems this location always resonated with fans, even though it was never shown after this episode and wouldn't get focused again until episode 167, Roller Cowards from season 5. The glove world bit aside, this episode does have a bit of interesting behind the scenes tidbits about it, not counting the production arc for the rock bottom characters. This episode was inspired by an experienced writer and Plankton's voice actor, Mr. Lawrence had as a child. According to the wiki, the idea for this episode came from when Mr. Lawrence and his friend got on a bus and the bus driver scared them when he went the entire route before letting them get off the bus. That's why people hate public transportation. I think that's one of the many factors that makes this series shine the best, how the writers take ideas from their own childhood and make them into stories for the show. But now with all that out of the way, let's watch this episode and relive the first appearance of not only Glove World, but Rock Bottom. So the episode starts up and Spongebob and Patrick got on the bus after leaving Glove World. Spongebob beats the sh** out of the bus driver while looking for his wallet, leading the bus driver to just let Spongebob take his seat. Spongebob and Patrick were going over what they got at Glove World, and then Patrick noticed that they were leaving Bikini Bottom, and then Spongebob realized that they were on the wrong bus. After going down a 90 degree angle, the bus came to a stop and the bus driver wouldn't let them go back to Bikini Bottom. Man, he must get real salty after getting whacked with a glove balloon. Spongebob and Patrick realized the place they were in was Rock Bottom and thought it looked so bizarre. The soil talked and all the citizens of Rock Bottom looked so unusual and Patrick started to get scared. Spongebob decided to go get a bus schedule, but a bus picked up Patrick and despite Spongebob's best efforts, he couldn't catch up with the bus, especially since his grandpa told him to not run for a bus that's going up at a 90 degree angle. My grandpa told me the same thing all the way back when I was 10. As Spongebob was waiting for another bus, he tied his shoe and a bus came and left them behind. How did the bus driver not see him? He was at the bus stop. Then Spongebob started chasing his balloon when the wind blew it away and missed another bus. Spongebob tried to ask a red anglerfish for help, but he just went after the balloon. Spongebob ended up missing another bus and tried to stay at the bus stop no matter what. After a while, he got hungry and had glove candy that he got from Glove World, but spit it out because it was glove flavored. <sighs> Ugh, so that's what glove flavor tastes like. Spongebob sees a candy machine and decided to get a kelp nougat crunch bar, but missed another bus. After going back to the machine again, he missed another. The candy bar fell through the machine, and he missed another bus. While trying to grab the candy bar, he missed another. Somebody came by and took the bar, and Spongebob missed three more buses. Spongebob was more pissed off than ever, and was relentless on catching a bus to get the hell out of rock bottom. After two more failed attempts to catch a bus, Spongebob went to the bus station to finally catch a bus and get to the bottom of this. Why didn't he just go there earlier? Everything could have gone better for him. He went way in the back of the line until he was number 329 in line and somebody put an egg on him that said 329. As the line started moving, the egg hatched and he was pushed slightly further back and cursed under his shirt. <laughs> I don't blame him. I never liked waiting for the school bus. Many hours later, Spongebob was finally next in line and after a brief confusion with Spongebob not speaking with the rock bottom accent, the ticket master says the bus will leave in 5 seconds and left immediately and that was the last bus until morning. Spongebob refused to leave and demanded a bus back home, but soon the lights went off and he started to get nervous. He tried turning on his glove light, but it shorts out and Spongebob realized he's in advanced darkness. Huh. 
If that's advanced darkness, then I wonder what Morty would actually look like in rock bottom. SpongeBob started to hear somebody in the dark and ran away until he hit the 90 degree angle. SpongeBob got more and more scared, but the guy coming towards him was the red anglerfish. He gave SpongeBob his balloon back and started to blow into the balloon, and SpongeBob started floating up out of rock bottom and he thanked the red anglerfish. SpongeBob made it out of rock bottom and got back home in no time. The balloon popped, Patrick was going back to rock bottom for SpongeBob, and the episode ends. So that was rock bottom, and this is a great episode. I really like how strange the citizens of Rock Bottom look and their accent where they just go over and over again is just so great. Some of Spongebob's failed attempts to catch the bus are funny and the part where the bus goes down and Spongebob loses his pants and underwear always made me laugh. A few things I always wondered about Rock Bottom is why the bus has never stopped and actually waited for Spongebob and never showed up when he was actually paying attention. Obviously I get this is supposed to be a strange place but it's kind of weird how the buses acted like this. Things like the place always being dark, the creatures looking bizarre, and the signs having questionable symbols make sense because Rock Bottom is so far down below Bikini Bottom at a much lower place under the sea. But it's just weird the buses are the way they are. I always did like the buses in this place, but even as a kid, I kind of wondered why the buses acted the way they did. I agree that it's pretty funny though, so I'll stop questioning it right now before people start to hate on me even more. Also, since Rock Bottom has advanced darkness, I always wondered what daytime would look like down there. It would probably still look darker than my room. Despite that, Rock Bottom is still a cool place. I think it would be nifty to see more of it in the future. It has been seen again in a few Spongebob video games, like Battle for Bikini Bottom, but it would be great to see another episode that expands on it even more. It does reappear in episode 409, Out of the Picture, from season 10, and some of the rock bottom characters appear in episode 457, The Night Patty, from season 11, but other than that, the rock bottom location hasn't appeared in the show since. It's also cool that we get to see Glove World for the first time in this episode. It doesn't get a lot of focus here, but it's nice that we do see more of it in the modern season, most notably season 12. Also, side note, but I always notice that the blue text from the opening credits for this episode and episode 34, ARG, was always a much lighter blue than the rest of the episodes, and it's a bit odd. It's not a big deal by any means, it's just something I noticed and wanted to say. This episode is definitely great, but I remember hearing a couple different opinions of this from some of my own friends. I vaguely remember this guy from my physics class during senior year of high school saying that he personally didn't like this episode because he didn't like when Spongebob kept missing the buses. However, I talked to him last year and he said he mostly blocked the show out of his memory and he only watched sports now so I make sure not to talk about the show to him anymore so who knows. On the other hand, I met this guy a couple summers ago that went to college with some of my closest high school friends, and he said this was definitely one of his favorite episodes. Moving on from that, I feel that this is just such a memorable episode. It has such a great tone where it really feels like you're in a strange area where everything just has it out for you. It's cool how this episode takes place outside of Bikini Bottom because, when you think about it, there aren't really that many episodes that truly take place outside of Bikini Bottom. And this is another thing I think the show has always excelled at, it's tone. It has always played with tone really well and really played with every emotion or feeling its audience ever had. Happy, sad, scared, action, suspense, etc. Of course, I always liked the bus driver abandoning Spongebob and Patrick, Spongebob hitting the bus driver with the balloon, and just about every scene with Patrick in this episode. I remember my dad also laughed at the part where the ticket master from the bus station took Spongebob's candy bar out of nowhere. And since my own parents have laughed at scenes from this show, it does go to show that no matter what, there are some things that you'll never be looked down upon for liking no matter how old you get. And if somebody does look down on you for liking something like Spongebob at an adult age, that I could go on and on. But if I'm being honest, I think I've said everything I feel like I can say about this. I do think it's such a memorable episode, but I feel like if I continue talking about it, I'd just be repeating what everybody else has said about this episode. It's definitely a fan favorite episode, and I think it definitely deserves to be considered as such. Rock Bottom is a great episode. It has such a great tone throughout, there are so many funny and bizarre moments, and the different setting really helps to convey everything this episode was going for. 
And all of that, and even more that I didn't talk about right now, is what makes this episode as memorable as it is, even after all these years. Also, going back to that accent I was talking about, I accidentally spit all over a floor, and a girl who was walking by slipped and fell, so I don't think the accent will work for me now.